The challenge is uh, based on four major prongs, and that is that the first, that the federal executive does not have the constitutional authority to unilaterally bind the country without the, the treaty going through parliament first and being enacted. And even if it were enacted through parliament, even parliament cannot encroach on exclusive provincial rights and other constitutional rights that are not the exclusive purview of the federal parliament. The second, the second challenge is that the majority of the the majority of the uh, terms of the CETA actually encroach on exclusive provincial rights such as natural resources, education, health, uh, property and civil rights, the licensing of professionals, the qualifications of professionals. Those are all uh, provincial, exclusive provincial jurisdiction. And this treaty, in its opening chapter, in Chapter 2, uh, the executive undertakes to make sure that the pro all levels of government, including the provinces and the municipalities, uh, comply with the treaty, which of course the federal executive nor federal parliament have the constitutional jurisdiction to do. Uh, thirdly, uh, what the treaty does is set up a foreign tribunal to adjudicate disputes between private corporations and the government of Canada when private corporations cannot engage in the business they want to engage in because a province or other entity which has exclusive uh, uh, jurisdiction over the matter says no, then we as, as uh, Canadians have to compensate that company. So what that does in effect is it, 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 it elim eliminates the uh, the pivotal lever of what maintains our constitutional democracy, and that's a fair and independent judiciary. So what we have is we have a tribunal that's going to sit in Ottawa when, when the dispute is heard, deciding issues of Canadian property, Canadian rights, and Canadian constitutional rights, but is beyond the reach or judicial review of Canadian courts. And uh, lastly, what the... CETA provisions do is eliminate subsidies, monopolies, and state enterprises that are, are there for the benefit of maintaining social welfare and economic programs for public welfare. And basically this treaty, virtually all of it, covers every, every single social program. The only three exceptions in the treaty are national security, taxation, and cultural industries. So everything up else is up for grabs for private exploitation by foreign uh, corporations, uh, overriding the Constitution of Canada and overriding the rights and, uh, uh, of Canadian citizens who are resident here. So uh, you've got this, uh, you've, you've filed the claim and the, the government has what, 30 days to respond? Well, what, what are their uh, options at this point? If it seems they seem to be uh, hell-bent, in Mr. Hellier's words, to, uh, to sign onto this agreement. Well, it's, it's going to be the usual, you know, par for the course. Uh, you know, this is not a statement of claim. If it's a statement of claim, it's the wrong statement of claim. If it's the right statement of claim, the uh, plaintiffs don't have standing. If they have standing, they don't have a prayer. If they have a prayer, you shouldn't hear it anyway. You know, the usual that goes on with all these cases. I mean, what response can they give? Justin Trudeau knows he can't broker away provincial rights. He knows he can't broker away monopolies. He knows he can't broker away public utilities that belong to the province and the people. He knows he can't broker away municipal and provincial social programs. What are they going to say except, you know, l'état c'est moi.